if you want to win free gift cards, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and like this video. What's up guys, it's Ben here, bringing you another video on my channel, and today we're going to be reacting to the top 5 best Call of Duty games, and let's get right into this. Pretty amazing. It only comes in at number 5 though, because I feel like the other Call of Duties offered a lot more, and if you take away nostalgia, it's hard to argue as the best. Let me actually... Call of Duty game since there was a lot of bullshit. Modern Warfare's campaign though is the best campaign I've played in in any fucking Call of Duty game. A lot of shit goes down in this game that makes you want yourself and the characters to succeed. The pacing- That's actually true, the campaign on this game was really stinking good. Like, I definitely agree with this guy here. Goes from gunning down everyone you see to more relaxed. Blowing people up in a fucking AC-130, isn't that great? One minute you're stopping a missile launch, the next you're waiting for the wind to come so you can shoot Zakaev's arm off. It's a really unique experience, and it genuinely feels like you're in a World War 3 type scenario, and anyone who's played it can agree that it is pretty fucking good. The multiplayer is also pretty revolutionary. They really stepped up their game in multiplayer from Call of Duty 3, and considering Modern Warfare was the first game to branch out from World War 2, if you remember, Call of Duty 1, 2, and 3, they were all World War games. There were some bullshit things in the game, such as M16 Juggernaug and the perk eavesdrop, but Call of Duty 4 was really the first Call of Duty to blow up the friend. Yeah, I definitely agree with this guy on this, this number 5 spot. Um, Call of Duty 3 was a really good game. The multiplayer was good, the campaign was awesome, like, on all of these, be like, older games, the campaign is just amazing, but now on the newer games, it's more multiplayer based, which is kind of the bad thing, so, I mean, and I get, I guess, they're focusing more on multiplayer because it makes more money, now it's supply drops are in, so, it is what it is. ...franchise into something fucking huge. Number four, Black Ops 1. To me, Black Ops 1 was a... You know, I'm actually kind of happy this game got on the list. I definitely agree with this because the campaign on this game is awesome. Multiplayer is pretty good, actually, you know, considering it was, the, like, Treyarch's own game, like, their first, like, own game. I'm pretty sure that was that, this was what that was. I like this game. This is a good game. It's a decent COD game. I wasn't too big a fan of the multiplayer just due to the fact that it felt really clunky to me. But the campaign and zombies was really fucking amazing. For yeah, there was a lot of overpowered guns in um, multiplayer. So. But the campaign was legit awesome. The zombies was straight beast. Kino der Toten, that was my favorite map. The whole setting for this game set it up for success. Vietnam had never been explored by Call of Duty before, there was only World War and Modern Warfare, so there was a shit ton of innovation with killstreaks, map design, story, and stuff like that. And the campaign was based on real events, which actually made it pretty fun to play through, as well as a bit of a mindfuck that really got you invested into the story. Although I wasn't too big a fan of multiplayer because I did feel like it was a bit clunky, it was still pretty solid and it introduced party games like Gun Game and One in a Chamber, and they also- I actually did enjoy the multiplayer. I mean, sure there are overpowered guns, but I still played the game. I mean, it's not like I'm just gonna stop playing the game because of overpowered uh, guns. I mean, if I I would stop playing Black Ops 3 a long time ago because the brekkie, but. Whatever. You had these wager matches, which I don't know why they fucking got rid of them. It was a bit like gambling, but with virtual currency, and you couldn't pay to win. That's a bit different from fucking nowadays. This isn't Activision, you cunts. Oh, I need to calm it. I need to calm down. This is going to be a relaxed video, okay? Activision, you're staying out of this one today. But, you know, Activision don't like doing good things, so I'm not surprised they took wagers away. The game also lets you customize your own emblem, your own reticules for red dot sites, and loads of little things that expanded upon Modern Warfare 2. And let's not forget about zombies. Holy shit. Shit. The innovation from World of War Zombies to Black Ops Zombies- Hey, Kino, and yo, in the Zombie Chronicles, the swastika isn't even on there. Like, that's completely cut off, so. It's pretty huge. First of all, you got two maps on the disc, which is already better than Black Ops 2 release. And there were really cool maps, which were Kina, the Totem, and Five. A lot of people hate Five, but I think it's a decent map just because it's set in the Pentagon. And Kina, the Totem is just a fucking classic. You can't argue with me there. Even the DLC maps were pretty solid. The best probably being Moon, since you got the World of War maps remastered. A shit ton of perks were added, like Deadshot, Daiquiri, Mule Kick, Stamina Up, and PhD Flop. And honestly, a lot of people say Black Ops 1 Zombies was the best of all time. Number three. World at War. This is where the list starts. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, the multiplayer was, uh, eh. 
but the campaign was awesome. The zombies was unbelievably good. So the, I definitely think this does deserve a number three spot. But I think Black Ops 1 could have gone over it. I mean, they're very similar multiplayer-wise, but to get a bit personal. So don't rip my heart out, please. Because a lot of people didn't like this Call of Duty. But since this was my first Call of Duty game, I have a lot of good things to say about it and maybe a bit biased, you know. The campaign in this game was also just amazing. It was so gritty and real. You actually felt like you were in the war yourself and some of the moments in this game were really unforgettable. For example, when you're laying by the fountain in Stalingrad and the Germans are just executing Russians right in front of you and then you meet Reznov, one of the greatest fucking characters ever, and sneak through Stalingrad to escape. You also had the Yeah, that's true. I do remember this thing. <laughs> this mission. I mean, it probably wasn't my favorite, but it's high up there. American side of the story where they would fight the Japanese who were fucking they were they were ruthless. One minute you think you're all good and then you just hear screaming and about 20 Japanese soldiers charging towards you with bayonets. It was really a, a great experience. The multiplayer was also really solid. Again, there's some bullshit like the MP40, but maps like Dome and Mackin and Mackin Day are some of my favorites ever. There was an obscene amount of gore, the guns were amazing, and it basically just took the formula that Call of Duty 4 had tried the year before and tried to improve upon it. At the end of the campaign, you understand unlocked Nazi zombies as a secret easter egg which I'm sure all of you remember which when I first played it I was terrified I got to round 3 and I was like 10 years old I was a fucking pussy the reason why I rank World at War so high is because of zombies and the fact that it evolved into something huge they added free yeah that's actually true zombies was really good on this game I mean World of War I still have that on like my PS2 so I could go back and play that that's crazy extra maps in DLC to this game which were Varak, Shinonuma and Doris. Again, really solid maps and the introduction to things like Pack-a-Punch and Perks were amazing and I've played Doris so many times it's actually unreal. It was a super fun mode to play with your friends too. It was riddled with but easter eggs and unique funny- On Doris you can just camp on the railing. That's what I do on the giant now on Black Ops 3. My highest round is like 46 but back to the video characters and is definitely the greatest part of Call of Duty to me. It's a shame they've added it every year now to every Call of Duty and it just gets shit. Thank you Activision, thank you. I want to fucking stab you all. Number two. Wow, he really hates Activision, but how is Black Ops 2 number two? Black Ops 2 should be number one. Are you kidding me? Dude, Black Ops 2, what? Black. Dude, Black Ops 2 is like the best, literally. Zombies was amazing, multiplayer was absolutely probably the best multiplayer we've ever had well, besides Black Ops 3 but other than that the campaign was even good this said literally all the factors so I don't really see how this is ranked number two but whatever Cops 2. I actually don't think Black Ops 2 deserves this spot. It is what I meant by if I don't add this game, people will be mad as fuck. But I still do think it is a good game. I personally think the only really solid part about this game for me was zombies, and even then, maps like Die Rise and Transit were really fucking shit. The multiplayer was really good, don't get me wrong, but this- Well, yeah, they only had Transit so you would buy the DLC. They added- That's what they did on, uh, Black Ops 3. They give you Shadows of Evil for free, and that map- just is not that good and you have to be pretty good to get to a high round on it so they pretty much are forcing you to buy the dlc which is smart but i mean that's just marketing so this was the game where they started to go into the future and that just gives me Vietnam flashbacks and I never really invested time into the campaign But it does come in at number two because if we do look at it as a game It is still fucking fantastic for multiplayer the guns the maps the kill streaks They all came together to create a really decent experience even though I didn't play the campaign that <laughs> I want to go back to that that guy's just dolphin diving for multiplayer, the guns, the maps, the kill streaks, they all came together to create a really decent experience. Even though I didn't play the campaign. <laughs> I still play Black Ops 2 a lot now. I, I played it yesterday. I have it on my Xbox One, so it's a lot of fun. Playing that much, I know it had a great story and it had a similar impact that Modern Warfare did, which was make you feel really invested into the game and it was a great sequel to black ops 1 but what really makes me love this game is the zombies obviously even though the first map on disc was trash and so was dlc 1 to an extent mob of the dead buried and origins were really fucking solid they offered so much both to the raw game and the story it was just incredible the map origins is my favorite zombies map of all time out of yeah i'm pretty sure it's like everyone's favorite map origins was so good i was just playing that yesterday on no two days ago on my Xbox One, I was uh, just playing it with some friends, and it's a lot of it's a lot of fun, but it's really hard because Panzer comes in around eight, and you have to be ready. And I mean, 
It's not that hard to get ready because you can get two staffs on round one, but... All of the zombies maps, we finally saw the old crew again, we could use fucking elemental staffs, and just seeing where zombies has come from was just good. Number one, Modern Warfare 2. Here we go, lads, we get to lick the arse of Modern Warfare 2 for a couple of minutes. This I personally think Black Ops 2 should be up there, but this is just his opinion, but I bet a lot of people would agree with me that Black Ops 2 should be the first one. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. The campaign, amazing. The multiplayer, addicting as fuck. Spec Ops? Yeah. No, but for real, Modern Warfare 2 is what I spent most of my time playing as a teenager. I had around 35 days playing time in that game, which is fucking sad, I know. But I couldn't help it. It was the first Call of Duty game to actually do something with their kill streaks, and getting that tactical nuke was the only thing on my mind back in that day. There was a lot of broken. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the tactical nuke is a little overpowered, so I'm guessing that's why they, they haven't put it in since Advanced Warfare. Because it is very overpowered. But, I mean. Well, technically, it was a DNA bomb, but still, that thing killed everyone on the map. Shit in that game, like one man army grenade launchers, the ACL, which had no recoil whatsoever, the UMP 45, the fact that once you got a Harrier strike, you pretty much had a chopper gunner which snowballed into a tactical nuke. But that's what made it fun. I've had countless 1v1s with my friends on Rust, countless times where I've raged to fucking oblivion because I was one off a nuke. It was just amazing. The intervention was so clean to use and quick scope with. Yeah, that's true, but I like the ballista and the DSR better. <laughs> So guys, I think I'm just going to end this video here, and if you guys want to see more Call of Duty reactions, let me know in the comment section below, and like this video, and if you haven't already, subscribe, I'm out.